My name's Sophie Clark, and I look after the Gamelan program at South Bank Centre. Um, I'm the Gamelan advisor, if you like. That's my official title. Um, okay. so, uh, how did you hear, hear about Gamelan? Um, I started playing first of all when I was uh, 12 years old, and I don't, I didn't live in London. I didn't grow up in London, so I started gamelan in my hometown of Bradford and Maven, which is just outside of Bath. And there was a lady called Talia Race in Bradford who had a gamelan in her loft, strangely enough, and uh, she owned it with, um, I think it was three other people at the time. So it spent half the year in Bradford Maven and half the year in Swindon. So um, someone just told me about it and I went along to her community session just out of curiosity and got hooked. <laughs> and then I found out that there was Gamelan also at South Frank Centre and there was a youth group on Saturday mornings. Um, and it was run by a friend of my mum's actually. Um, she used to tutor it and she told me about it and I used to go up on the train every Saturday to here, <laughs> to this place, uh, the Royal Festival Hall and joined the youth group. And again, got, got hooked and kind of took over my life from there. <laughs> um, I heard you, you've been to Java. Uh, could you tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Well, um, after sort of studying at South Bank, um, when I was 18, eventually I moved to London, uh, went to university um, and studied music and, and did a lot of gamelan playing still. And then um, I was kind of proficient on a lot of the basic gamelan instruments, but I really wanted to learn some of the softer style instruments for the bab and there. Uh, I wanted to find out a bit more about the drumming techniques as well. So I applied for the Dharma Sutra scholarship. In, um, I was awarded it, luckily, for a year. Um, so I went to Java in August of 2000, um, and I ended up staying for three years. So I came back in August 2003, um, but I studied in solo in Surakarta. Um, SCSE, uh, which I think is now EC in solo. So. Um, when you were there, were you performing a lot? Uh, Did a mixture of different things. I was doing a lot of rehearsing, so I played with a lot of different community groups. So um, I would go to the classes there um, and went up to semester six um, with a, a year group and just followed them through for three years. And then on most nights, I'd find another community group to play with. So I'd go to Benoa and play with. Um, or the teachers on Friday evenings, um, and I'd go along to the, the Mankunigaran sometimes and play in the lunchtime groups there, um, and did lots and lots of Klinangans and rehearsals. I'd go to uh, lots of gamelan makers' rehearsals and things like that. Um, but I was invited to play for a lot of weddings and um, some different kind of performances as well, but I used to go mainly and watch a lot of performances, lots of wayangs and um, dance performances as well. It was great. <laughs> Miss it. Then when you came to London, uh, did you, uh, so what did you do when you came back from Java? Well, that's a good question. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So um, I applied to start a PhD at City University, which I'm ashamed to say I'm still doing <laughs> half seven years later. Um, I'm hopefully going to finish it this year. Um, and just before I came back, um, I'd obviously told gamelan players here that I was coming back. and. As chance would have it, the South Bank Centre were looking for another gamelan tutor who could work on a freelance basis and take some of the workshops and things like that. So um, I said, yes, please. So I started university again in London um, and would teach um, mainly introductory workshops for school groups and um, maybe groups of adults as well for team building sessions and that kind of thing. So just on a sort of um, temporary basis. You are playing Balinese in Gavin. I heard you were playing Balinese. How did you get involved in the Balinese gamelan? <laughs> okay. Um, I did, for a time, play quite a lot of Balinese gamelan and also Sundanese gamelan. Um, and that was mainly, I think, through City University, where I did my undergrad and masters. Um, obviously, Andy Channing was teaching the City groups. Um, so I did a bit of Balinese again as well, um, which was great. I loved it. So I ended up playing Lula Cheetah for a while as well. And I also did um, Sundanese Gamelan with Rachel Swindles um, when she took the classes at City. So we did quite a lot of things. I think I even did a performance with Andy doing some salonding stuff at the Spitz in Spitzerfield, which is quite mad. Um, but it kind of got to a stage before I left to Java that I was doing Gamelan pretty much every night of the week, which was great. But then when I came back from Java, obviously I had to work a bit and do the PhD. So 
I kind of scaled it down a little bit. So I still teach some Balinese gamelan um, taster sessions, but my main, because my first love, I guess, is the Javanese gamelan, I decided to kind of stick with that and develop that a bit more until I might become a bit, a bit more free time to go back to doing Balinese as well. Um, how did you get involved? You were working at South Bank, could you tell us? Yeah, yeah sure. Well, um, obviously I came back from Java in 2003 and pretty much went straight away into teaching here on a one-off basis. And then um, I think it was 2005, something like that, the festival hall was closing for refurbishment. So it was closed for almost two years, just under two years. And um, I was called into a meeting with Sean McLennan and Neil Quinton, who looked after the gamelan here um, and work for the learning and participation um, department. And they were saying that they were very interested in bringing the gamelan back and that they were planning on a, a loving new room for the gamelan at South Bank Centre. Um, but they realised that they didn't really have anyone to guide them and look after the gamelan too much. So um, they invited me to come and work, again, on a freelance basis, but basically two days a week um, in the offices looking after the gamelan. So, I was in charge of getting it back here, unpacking it, <laughs> sorting it all out, installing it in this lovely new room that they built for us, and then starting the programme again from scratch, um, which has been really good, very challenging, but really good fun. You like it? Yeah, I love it. And we had um, some very interesting projects. So obviously, June 2007, the festival hall reopened, and there was a big, huge weekend called Overture, a big festival. And um, one of the elements of it was a gamelanathon, I guess you'd call it, um, where we had 25 gamelan groups from all over the country coming together to play. So I'd had to research and find out where the gamelans were in the country and who had active groups that would like to come and perform. And I invited them to come, and uh, a lot of groups came, some of them bringing their own instruments and some of them using ours. And we had performances all over the place. We started off in the claw ballroom upstairs, and we had um, performances outside. We had um, some students from St. Martin's College build us a little pavilion outside with sails going between some trees to cover it and make a lovely performance area. Um, and then we had some performances upstairs as well in the function room. So it's a really good thing, a really good time. Lots and lots of different gamelan players from all over the country. Um, <laughs> I heard there are a few community groups here. Could you tell us about the Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess the first group, obviously, that springs to mind are the South Bank Gamelan Players. And there they've got a, a nice title now of Ensemble in Residence at South Bank Centre. So I think they started off originally back in 1987. They were founded by Alec Ross, um, who was kind of instrumental in getting the Gamelan here in the first place, which is great. And um, a, a lot of the, the founder members, I guess, are, are sort of the, the primary tutors here now who've been playing for 20-odd years. Um, and some of them were ex-students of York University and other places that had had a, a gamelan and a, a program running. So they came together to play and I think new members joined and it kind of created what's now regarded as the professional group here. Um, and then branched out a lot of the tutors, a lot of the musicians from that group now branched out. A lot of them don't live in London anymore. So they've started community groups in Oxford, um, Hampshire and all over the place. Um, so that, that they rehearse basically on a Friday night and they're resident here, so they get to use the room, they get to use the instruments and do quite a lot of performances here and different kind of exciting projects. Um, and then since the reopening, certainly, we've been trying to rebuild the, the Gamelan programme a little bit. So we've got um, two classes that um, come together on Thursday night. So there's a kind of beginners slash intermediate class and then the more advanced group. So but they're kind of their own little community group, I guess. And then we started a new class last night, actually, um, for total beginners um, who've come to Gamelan for the first time, or they may have done a taster session and wanted to find out a bit more. So um, that started last night. So hopefully we'll be able to then feed those people into the more intermediate classes later and recruit new beginners as well and establish more of a community feel to the different groups. 